Let's start off investigating methodologies by looking at the waterfall methodology. It's the oldest methodology and it's the easiest to understand. So the first obvious thing that I'm kind of hoping you've worked out by now is why it's called the waterfall methodology. You can see that all the steps are arranged one above the other and that they flow down like a waterfall. Okay, it's nothing like a waterfall, but you get the idea. That's why it's called a waterfall, is because you start at requirements and analysis and then you work your way down and you flow down the steps one by one until you get to the bottom. So that's no different to the steps we talked about in previous videos. What makes this methodology different? So first of all, it's the idea that you follow all of the steps in order. Well, that's quite logical. But the second idea, which does make this different from what we've talked about before, is that in the case of an issue, you go back up one step. And you can back up as many steps as you like if you get into problems. However, when you go back down again, you have to go back down the steps in order. In other words, this is a long way of saying you can't miss any of the steps out. Let's put that in context and think of an example. So let's say, for example, you've been to your client, you've gathered uh, the requirements, the needs and the wants. Um, the client signed off on the project and you start the design phase. You send the client your first plans, your first drawings, your first ideas, and the client says, actually, that's not what I want at all. Can we, can we start again? So therefore you go back up and you would do the requirements analysis again. You do some more investigation, some research, some interviews. Uh, you'd spend some time watching what the client does and then you'd go back down and do your design again. Well, let's say for the sake of argument, the design stage works well, but then at the implementation stage, you run into all sorts of problems because you actually can't give the client what he wants. Let's say, for example, the software that you wanted to use actually can't do it and the cost starts to spiral out of control. So in that case, you'd go back to the design, the design phase, and maybe make some changes to your design. But that might involve going back up and looking at requirement analysis again. So the concept is from there, you would then go back down to design, to implementation, testing, deployment, to maintenance. So the rules are that you can go back up as many steps as you like, but when you come back down the waterfall, you cannot miss any stages out. What's important to remember is that this methodology was the original methodology. And although it's here set in stone, often life isn't quite like that. And there are some products and some teams for whom this wouldn't work at all. And that's what you're gonna to need to think about in M1. So to recap, it's the oldest method, it's sequential, you flow through the steps in order, any problems back up one step, and you can go back up as many as you like. However, only going down one step at a time, you can't miss any stages out. So why would you use the waterfall methodology. If you know upfront exactly what's involved in the project, we did the example of FIFA, FIFA 21 it'll be now. With FIFA 21, they know exactly what's gonna be required. There are gonna be the new players in their kit. They're gonna probably use the same engine or tinker with the game engine, but fundamentally they know 99% of what they're gonna do before they even start making it. And in that sense, for a new release of FIFA or a new release of OS X or a new release of Windows, the product definition is stable. You know exactly what you're getting into. There aren't going to be any surprises halfway through. Think about writing an app for, uh, I don't know, virtual reality. When the virtual reality software and hardware is moving constantly and changing a great deal um, day by day. And it could be that a fantastic idea in June with the release of a new piece of hardware totally changes in July. And with FIFA, you're not gonna have that. So equally, the, um, the requirements can't be ambiguous. And ambiguous means that they're not clear. So the requirements have to be clear for the waterfall method to work. Um, the expertise, the, the brain power, the manpower, the people working on the project, they need to be freely available at the time when they're required. And this methodology works really well when the project is short and can be well defined. Let's jump on to the advantages of the waterfall method. It's easy to understand and it's simple. 
And why is it simple? Because the model is so rigid. You know upfront exactly what you're going to have to do. And that's why it works with the project where you want you know everything up front already. Uh, the phases are processed and completed one at a time. So for someone managing the project, it's very easy to know where your different teams should be. Think about um, think about FIFA again. There'll be a team in charge of the graphics. There'll be a team in charge of the uh, of the new players. There'll be a team in charge of the scoring. There'll be in a team in charge of the menu systems. So if you had this system, this methodology, you would you would know where each team was at a given time. So smaller projects is, is where you would use the waterfall methodology, where you know things up front. However, there are some areas where the waterfall would be a really poor choice of project management system. For example, if the design phase has gone wrong, this can complicate implementation. Having to go back a stage and then come back again just wastes time. Time equals money. So unless you know up front what you're doing, this could be a very costly way of building a project, of making an application, if things start to change or go wrong. For complex projects, this wouldn't work at all. This only works for simple projects. For longer projects, again, this would be a poor choice. And if the requirements are going to change, this would again be the worst case of project. My advice to you is to use this project as your project of choice for P1.